Eventually, you'll want to get all of the upgrades on your units, but sometimes you're forced to fight before you can afford them all. Knowing which upgrade to get first will help you take better fights throughout the game. A lot of the time, you'll want to attack just as a key upgrade completes instead of waiting for full upgrades. Now, the question is, what are key upgrades? The value you get from an upgrade is not always inherent to the upgrade, but which units you're getting it for and how you're using those units. For example, Thumbring increases attack speed and accuracy for cavalry archers and crossbowmen, but only accuracy for skirmishers. Since elite skirmishers already have a 90% hit rate, it barely does anything. Cavalry archers go from 50% to 100% accuracy, and their fire rate is increased by 11%, so it's basically necessary to get before doing anything with them. An example of an upgrade having the same effect but varying degrees of effectiveness is forging on spearmen versus scouts. Spearmen with forging take 3 hits to kill scouts as they mainly rely on bonus damage. Plus 1 on top of 18 is a relatively small increase. If the scouts have forging, however, the spears go down in 8 hits instead of 9. If you look at the results if the units got armor over attack, you'll see the reverse. Scouts now don't get any benefit from armor, but spearmen can tank 3 extra hits up to 12 needed. Sometimes it's not even about the units that you're getting the upgrades for, but the way that you're using them. If you need to fight mass pikemen with knights, you'd rather have attack upgrades instead of armor, as killing the pikemen faster will reduce more damage received than reducing each hit by one. Against crossbowmen, the story is reversed. Since crossbowmen have lower base attack, reducing it by one is actually very significant. In this case, having plus two armor makes knights go down in 40 hits compared to 30 with just plus one. I hope you're beginning to see the pattern here. Against units with high attack, reducing it by only one by getting armor often doesn't do much. Getting attack to reduce enemy numbers faster is likely the play. Against units with low attack, getting armor makes a big difference where your units get more attacks in before dying, which increases your damage output. Since ranged attack from the blacksmith also provides extra range and affects buildings, it should almost always be prioritized over armor. One exception is for skirmishers versus archers. Getting plus one reduces fletching archers damage to one from two on your skirmishers. The same thing happens in Castle Age where getting plus two armor on elite skirmishers reduces bodkin crossbowmen damage down to one. This can sometimes offset the extra range and attack from the attack upgrade since tanky skirms can just get in close and rely on bonus damage to win the fight. Now that we understand some of the basics about blacksmith techs, let's look at some more specific examples. If you're going scouts and feudal age, bloodlines is the best upgrade if you're fighting enemy military units. The fact that you have to mine gold means you probably won't be able to get it early though. If feudal age is going long and you want to take a fight once you have like 6 or more scouts, picking up bloodlines can be a big boost. Against spearmen and villagers, forging can be best as taking these units out quickly can be important. Against archers, getting armor before engaging is huge. Usually getting all these upgrades on scouts will delay your castle age timing too much, so they're usually skipped. You should only get them if you can force a good fight before castle age. Otherwise, you could do full feudal style against smaller numbers of crossbowmen. Should you get thumbring or ballistics on crossbowmen? If you're up against eagle warriors or knights, thumbring makes a massive difference compared to ballistics. The extra attack speed lets you thin out their numbers much faster. Since melee units have to get close to attack, ballistics loses its usefulness almost instantly after the engagement starts. Against villagers and cavalry archers, you'll want to get ballistics first. Ballistics will let you pick off fleeing villagers, so if you plan to raid the enemy, especially if they're not going too many knight or eagle warriors, getting ballistics can be the correct choice. The reason you get it against cavalry archers is that it's the only way you'll ever hit them. Unlike knights, they don't need to get in close to attack you, so they can more easily disengage from a bad fight. Ballistics will also help your TCs when the cav archer inevitably raid. In early imp, if you're going for cavalier, you should usually get the final armor first since it gives plus one melee and plus two pierce armor. This lets you attack under castles and into arbalisters much more comfortably. There are a few cases where you'd specifically get Blast Furnace first, though. Since Blast Furnace is plus 2 attack and Plate Barding Armor is only plus 1 melee armor, when taking a fight against Halberdiers or other cavalry, you'd rather have Blast Furnace first. 
If you're going Arbalesters, you need to eventually get Arbalester, Bracer, and Chemistry upgrades, but you usually can't get them all right away. Arbalester gives plus 5 HP and plus 1 damage. Chemistry only gives plus 1 attack, but also unlocks Bombard Cannon and Hand Cannoneers. Bracer gives plus 1 attack and plus 1 range. All three upgrades are comparable in costs. You'll almost always want Bracer first, as range is extremely important. 8 range crossbowmen can take out mangonels before they become onagers. Bracer also helps castles and TCs. Next up is deciding between plus 1 attack and 5 HP versus just plus 1 attack. The answer is not this simple though. Chemistry takes 100 seconds to research, so getting it started early can let you time your Arbalester upgrade to come in at the same time so you can hit a stronger timing. Since Arbalester comes in in only 50 seconds, you can get it much later. You can even make an argument for getting Chemistry before Bracer for the same reason sometimes. Anyways, that'll be it for this one. It hasn't been a super comprehensive guide, but it should be enough to get you started thinking about which upgrades to get first. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.